So before we get to today's video, I just wanted to quickly ask for any of you watching if you could just hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get as many followers as possible just so that I can continue to make more videos and hopefully make a career out of this someday. Thank you very much for watching and we'll get to the show. Hello again everyone and welcome to this episode of The Noble Crumb. My name is Jason. So today we're going to be doing a bread recipe and it's one of my favorite bread recipes which is a focaccia bread. So this is a very basic focaccia dough recipe that we're going to use. You can have as much fun as you want as far as doing the toppings on it. Uh, but it's super simple, it tastes fantastic and anyone you give it to is absolutely going to love it. So here's what you're going to need for our focaccia bread. So here are all the ingredients for our focaccia bread. We're going to need three and a third cups of flour, two and a quarter teaspoons of quick rise yeast, two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of olive oil, 400 mils of lukewarm water. You have the option of adding two teaspoons of herbs and spices of your choice. We're going to need one large garbage bag for our final rise and I will explain how we use that. And we're going to finish with salt, olive oil, and any toppings of your choice. Then we will bake this at 450 degrees for about 20 minutes. Okay, so for the focaccia bread, this is going to go super quick. So I've got the mixing bowl for my stand mixer here. So to that, I'm going to add my flour. So that was three and one thirds cup of just all purpose flour. Then to that, we're gonna add in our yeast. So that's two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast and I'm gonna put it on the side there. Let's get all of that in there. And then I'm gonna add my salt. So two teaspoons of salt and I'm gonna add it to the other side. Basically, you don't really want the salt touching the yeast at the beginning because it will kill the yeast a little bit. Then we're gonna add in our olive oil. So I've got two tablespoons of olive oil here. Done. And now I'm gonna add my 400 mils of lukewarm water. You wanna make sure that it's not too hot so that we don't kill the yeast. And literally, that's it for this. So we're gonna put it onto the stand mixer now. Okay, so everything's in the bowl. We're just gonna turn this on and let it come together. Give it a little scrape and get all that flour that's on the bottom. Okay, so now at this point it's all kind of come together and you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself that this is looking really wet. This is how this is supposed to look and I'll explain that a little bit further. So as you're making this dough, you're gonna find out that it is a really wet dough and that is what you want. So please refrain yourself from adding more flour to it. Believe me, you don't want a stiff, dry dough with this. It needs to be wet, it's gonna be sticky, but honestly, it's super easy to work with. You wanna have that moisture in there. It's gonna help develop those nice big bubbles that are kind of characteristic of a focaccia bread. And just bear with me, you'll be fine. It'll work out good, so make sure the dough is wet. Now at this point, because it's come together, I'm gonna to add in uh, some herbs to this. And again, you can add whatever you'd like to it. Uh, whatever your taste. So I'm going to add about two teaspoons of just Italian herbs. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of 
chili flakes to this just because I like a bit of spice. And now we're just gonna continue kneading this for about five minutes. All right, so it's been about five minutes uh, kneading the dough and it's looking great. So now I'm gonna take this off of the stand mixer. All right, so that's what the dough is looking like. And you can see, yes, it's really wet. It's really sticky. But when it comes to making bread, most of the time, like they say, wetter is better. So we're gonna take this now and we're gonna transfer it to a large mixing bowl. So what I'm gonna do with this is give it a quick spray with just some cooking spray so that it doesn't stick or dry out. And then you're just gonna take your dough, scrape it out. And yes, it's a bit of a mess, I get it and just put it into this. Just getting the last little bit. All right, and now we're gonna leave, I'm gonna cover this, leave it off to the side. I'm gonna check on it after an hour. Basically, you want it to be at least doubled in size. Depending on where you are, the temperature of your room, all of that fun stuff, it might take a little bit longer might take a little bit less, but typically an hour is when you're gonna to wanna to check it. So I'll cover this and put this off to the side. Okay, so it's been about two hours now and I've let my dough rise. It's a lot colder up here right now, so it did take a little bit more time than I was expecting, but you can see the dough looks great. It's puffed right up to fill the bowl. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my nine by 13 inch pan that I've lined with parchment paper and sprayed with some oil and we're just gonna plop that right in the pan. Now, we're gonna spread the dough out to fill the pan and you're gonna wanna use some cooking spray. Just spray it on your hands like this and it makes it really easy to spread the dough around. Okay, so it's time to talk about the garbage bag, which I'm sure you guys have been wondering what the heck is he talking about with this. So because we're putting it into a pan and it will rise up, we need an area, we don't just want to put plastic wrap on top of it because if it gets stuck to it, it'll get sticky, you pull it up, it ruins your bubbles, all that fun stuff. So the purpose of the bag is to keep moisture in that area that the dough is so it doesn't dry out. So literally, I've done this several ways. You can just shake the bag, kind of carry the air into it as you tie it in. You can blow into the bag to make it inflate, or you can even use just a regular fan. But it is important to make sure that you do use the bag to cover it, just to help keep the moisture of the bread. Okay, so really quick and really simple, I'm just gonna line my pan up against the edge of the table. I'm gonna grab my garbage bag, just shake it open, put the dough and pan into the bag, and basically you just wanna get some air in there so that the bag does not hit the top of the dough and just tie the bag shut. Really simple, really easy. And that's where we're gonna leave it for its final rise. So a couple of really important tips when you're adding toppings to your focaccia. Now, one of the things that a lot of people run into is burning the toppings on it. So today I'm using a sun-dried tomato and onions. Uh, the sun-dried tomatoes are already in oil themselves. The onions I had soaked in an olive oil for a couple hours as well to use it. You just want to make sure that the items that you're putting on top do get a good coating of oil on it because that's going to help prevent burning. And when we're putting this stuff on top of the dough, we press it in so that it's a little bit further indented into the dough. And we're going to drizzle some oil on top of it as well just to add that moisture. The other important tip that you need to have is when you're doing your focaccia is before putting it in the oven, give it a decent sprinkling of salt. You do need that extra salt in there to bring out the flavors. So don't be afraid of salt. It's going to be your best friend in this to make it taste delicious. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half and I'm just going to take the pan out of the bag here. My dough is looking really, really good. I can see lots of big air bubbles that have formed inside of it. So this is going to turn out great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my toppings. So I'm going to use sun-dried tomatoes and some onions. So I have a jar of sun-dried tomatoes that come in already packed in oil. And I'm just going to start putting these on top and pressing it into the dough. You want to make sure that they're pressed in so that the oil sits on top of them so that they don't burn. So 
So I'm also going to add in some onions that I have had soaking in olive oil for a couple hours. And I'm just going to add these slices of onions on top. And again, just pressing them into the dough. Just add them wherever you want. You can add as many or as little as you want. Or again, like I said, any toppings. Olives are a really nice choice. I've done it with um, artichoke hearts have been really good. Um, but you can really, the sky's the limit, just soak your toppings in oil so that they can absorb some of that, which will prevent burning. And this is looking just about done, I think. So then I'm going to add some of this oil that the onions have been soaking in because it's got full of flavor. And I'm going to drizzle oil on top of the dough as well. You want to make sure, again, we're just preventing burning. And because this is a flavored oil, it's just going to make the bread taste that much better. All right, and I think that's pretty much good. And now the other important part is salt. So we wanna make sure that we're adding salt on top of the bread because if we don't add it, it's gonna be quite bland. You can add sea salt if you want. I honestly right now just have our basic table salt and I'm gonna sprinkle a good amount just on top of the dough before we put this into the oven. So at this point, I'm going to tent it with some foil and we're going to pop this into the oven and I will move the foil after the first 10 minutes of baking. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes on the dot and I just took the bread out of the oven and it looks so good. The dough has puffed up really nice and gotten big and I can see we have some nice big air bubbles in there. None of the toppings got burnt. That's why, again, I covered it for those first 10 minutes and then removed it for 10 minutes. And look at that. I am so happy, so good. So now I'm going to let this cool down a bit before we cut into it. So now that the bread has had a chance to cool down a bit, let's cut into it and see how it looks on the inside. So with a serrated knife, it cuts super easy. Just make sure I get all the way through. And when I open it up, we can see we got a really nice bread consistency here. There's nice bubbles throughout, lots of good different shapes and sizes of bubbles, which is what you want. That beautiful golden color on the top and the bottom. So this turned out great. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this recipe. Let me know. And that is my simple focaccia bread recipe. Again, I hope you guys had fun making it. Uh, I'd love to hear what kind of toppings and flavors you guys use to make yours. So please, again, as always, like, subscribe, comment. I love hearing from you guys. And thank you again for watching The Noble Crumb. I'll see you next time. Bye.